everyone, this is Matt Tu Show with Intro Stats. Today we're looking at statistics and parameters. So we've kind of talked about already that a uh, that you have a, a population that you're trying to figure out what's going on with millions of people, but you probably can't take data from all those millions of people. You have to collect a sample, right? A small subgroup of the population. We call that a sample. Um, so when you're dealing with this in, t in statistics, we deal with a lot of samples versus populations, samples versus populations, trying to figure out what's going on in the population, but all we have is sample data. Because of that dynamic, in stats we usually have two different letters for just about everything. So if you think about, I need a, a letter that represents the sample mean, the mean of whatever, maybe 50 people in my sample, but then I also need a letter that represents the population mean, the mean of all the millions of people in my population. So what you have is this sort of dynamic uh, between samples and populations. So we have a couple names for this. Um, we call so a number calculated from sample data in order to understand the characteristics of the sample is called a statistic. So the word statistic um, is a number that's calculated from sample data to sort of understand the sample data. For example, if we calculated the mean of some sample data, we have calculated a statistic. It's also where you get the name for the class, statistics, intro stats, right? The study of numbers that are calculated from sample data and then what can they tell us about the population. So statistic, think of as goes with sample. So if you calculate data from sample, like a sample standard deviation or a sample mean or a sample proportion, those are all statistics. But again, that's not really what we're after. We're not really after what happened in the sample data. What we're really after is what's going on in the world around us. What's going on uh, in the population. So we call that a parameter. Parameter. A parameter is a number that describes the characteristics of a population. Like, for example, a population percentage or a population mean or a population standard deviation. That's called a parameter. They're very difficult to figure out, especially when you have big populations with millions of people. It's very difficult to come up with accurate parameter estimates. But some of the stuff, a lot of the stuff we'll learn in this class is trying to do just that. So a lot of the sort of advanced stuff that we learn in this class will be around how do we figure out what's going on with millions of people. Now sometimes it can be a guess about the population. Uh, a lot of people sort of you know, look at a lot of samples and then try to guess what they think the population is. Uh, so a lot of times a population parameter might just be a guess. So somebody might say, I'm not sure, but I think the mean average for everyone in California is this, right? Um, but it can also be a calculation from an unbiased census. So if you have a complete census of the entire population and it hasn't been messed up with bias too much, then you can actually calculate the population mean or the population percentage and get an exact number. Okay, so you'd have to have an unbiased census to really know the parameter for sure. If you don't really have an unbiased census, then you're stuck with trying to make guesses about the population. So again, parameters are oftentimes guesses. So let's say we got, so now what we have is two different sets of letters. Letters that represent statistics, sample data, and re uh, letters that represent population parameters. Okay? So let's look at some of these famous letters. This is almost like a, a famous letter uh, uh, lecture because there's a lot of the letters you'll see later on in the class in all the advanced formulas and in the computer programs. So it's important that you kind of are aware of these letters. Uh, that they're going to pop up in computer programs, they're going to kind of pop up in formulas. So I think we've already seen that the sample mean is loaded as X bar. X bar. So we usually denoted as X bar. X with a bar over it is usually denoted as a sample mean, the mean average of some sample data. But that's not really what we're after. We're after the population mean. I want to know what the mean is for the millions of people in the population. Well, that would be the Greek letter mu. The Greek letter mu. It's very common in statistics to use Greek letters for population values. So you'll see that a lot in statistics. Um, okay, so we have the population mean is the Greek letter mu. So if you're having trouble drawing it, it's always good to practice this a little bit. How do you draw the Greek letter mu, right? 
Well, you just draw draw a U on your paper. Just do, do that with me. Draw a lowercase U on your paper. And now drop a tail on the left side, almost like you were draw, drawing a uh, drawing a P or something. It's a Greek letter mu. Right? Um, so the sample standard deviation we saw was S. If you see S by itself, that's the sample standard deviation. But if you're talking about the standard deviation of everybody in a population, you're usually using the Greek letter sigma. It's like the lowercase sigma. So the Greek letter sigma, whenever you see that symbol, that means a population standard deviation. Let's practice drawing that. <laughs> so if you see Greek letter sigma, so what you do is draw an O. Do this with me. Get a pencil out and draw this with me. Draw an O. And then put a bar going, horizontal bar going to the right on top of the O. Alright, so that would be sigma. Alright, sigma. That, when you see that symbol in statistics, that means a population standard deviation. By the way, we learned that variance is the square of the standard deviation. So notice sample variance would just be S squared. And population variance would be sigma squared. So if you see the square on it, that means variance. So sigma squared is population variance, S squared would be sample variance. Now what about um, how, how many people are in your sample, or how many people are in your population, or how many objects? Um, that is very important information. A lot of statisticians have to keep track of sizes of things. And we saw that one of the sampling biases we can have is that our sample data was too small. So it's really important to know how many numbers were in your sample data. So that's called the sample size or sample frequency. You'll hear that word frequency or sometimes people will say size. Um, and that's a n. So lowercase n is usually the sample size or frequency. How many numbers or values are in your sample data. Okay? So lowercase n. But what if I'm trying to find how many people there are in uh, New York right now? How many people are in New York all together? That's a very difficult number to figure out, right? Well, that would be the population size, and usually that's denoted as a capital N. Usually when you see capital N, that's usually a population size or a population frequency. So capital N is that. By the way, I, uh, most computer programs, lowercase n is sample size. I noticed that StatCato uses capital N for sample size, which I'm not a big fan of because uh, that can be confusing. So just, just to warn you, uh, the capital N in Staccato is denoting sample size, not, uh, not population size. Okay, um, it's really important to figure out percentages. In fact, one of the things that we try to do a lot of in statistics is, is around percentages. And we saw that the decimal equivalent of a percentage was a proportion. So if you're trying to figure out a proportion from sample data, it's P hat. We usually call it P hat, it's like you put a little hat on the P. It's like a little upward arrow on top of the P. When you see that symbol in statistics, that means the sample proportion. Now that proportion should be written as a proportion. It really shouldn't be written as a percentage. You should convert it back to decimal, the decimal equivalent. So this symbol means sample proportion. And by the way, that's very important in, in uh, computer programs. Uh, yeah, I don't think and there's hardly any time in a computer program that they'll let you put in a percentage. You have to always convert the percentage back into a proportion before you type it in the computer. So the sample proportion is p hat. But what about the population proportion? Well, there's a couple letters that are used. Um, historically, we in statistics we used to use pi. Uh, pi was always used as the population proportion. You can imagine that it created some kind of uh, a little bit of, uh, of controversy with geometry classes, right, and the famous number pi, 3.141, and all that. But when you see pi in statistics, it's not 3.14. This is actually a symbol we used for many years on denoting the population percentage or population proportion. Some people don't like using pi very much anymore, so a lot of computer programs have gone to p. Uh, they use a lowercase p for population proportion. I'm actually not a big fan of that because there's so many things in stats that are denoted by the letter P. And it becomes very confusing when somebody says P in statistics, you're like, okay, what P are you talking about? There's so many. So I, I actually prefer pi. I'm kind of old school that way. 
Uh, I like pi as my population proportion. So when you see me use pi, it's not 3.14, it's actually the population percentage or the population proportion. Okay, here's a few more advanced ones that we'll get to later in the class, but it's good to, since we're talking about letters, to go ahead and do that. One is called the sample correlation coefficient. And uh, it's, you know, it, it's, an, it's a statistic that we calculate that um, uh, basically tells us how much of a relationship does two different quantitative variables have. So if you're trying to see if how much two different quantitative variables are related, this is a statistic that we use oftentimes. It's the lowercase r, and it's the sample correlation coefficient. But if you're looking for population correlation, so do these variables have correlation in the populations, then usually we use the Greek letter rho. I know, it looks like a squiggly P. It's not really a P, it's actually the Greek letter rho. When you see that squiggly P, it's actually the population correlation coefficient. Yeah, I kind of warned you, there's tons of things in stats that look like P's, uh, but this is actually not a P, it's the Greek letter rho. That's why uh, correlation tests are often called rho tests. You'll see people say that sometimes. Okay, so that's that symbol rho. Um, if you're trying to find the slope of a line from sample data, uh, that would be B1, usually B1. I know that some of you used M in your algebra classes, but in stats we use B1 for sample slope. Beta1, this is the Greek letter beta, beta1 is a population slope. So um, you'll see in, um, when we get to uh, dealing with lines and uh, correlation tests, sometimes they use this symbol in the null, hypoth null and alternative hypothesis for a correlation test. Um, yeah, you'll see, by the way, both of these used in correlation tests. So that's kind of tricky. We'll get to that later, though. Uh, B0 is usually the sample y-intercept. So if you calculate the y-intercept from sample data, you get uh, B0. And beta zero is denoted as the population y-intercept, okay? So all of these numbers over here, all these letters over here are statistics. They're numbers we get from sample data. All of these numbers, all these letters here are the population parameters. So all the, all the mu, sigma,